Hello, my name is Cami, and I am an organization aholic. <laughs> Truly, I get a serious high from a well organized space. I feel like I finally got our homeschool room organized and functional from the inside out, and I'm going to open up all the cupboards and drawers and just show you the results. Be sure to visit my blog tidbits at tidbits cami.com. I'll link it in the description. And I'm gonna share there my nine best tips for organizing a productive homeschool room, office space, or any creative space for your family. Now I just shared the reveal of our homeschool room. If you missed that, be sure to visit my blog or channel for all the details and um, sources that you may see throughout this video. But right now I want to share how this small space functions so well for us as I homeschool my four kids for the first time. Now having been at it for five months now, I've learned a lot about what kind of order we need and how to store things so that the kids can learn and create at their optimum best without me going crazy over all the mess of it. <laughs> I truly hope you come away with ideas for your own home organization and excited to create a space for your family to learn and create whether or not you are homeschooling. All right, let's dig right inside these closed door cabinets and check out what is inside. So these cabinets are tall, but I have kept their our most used items down at everyone's level for easy access. So in this deeper lower cabinet, I have all their school workbooks and curriculum just kept nicely inside these paper organizers. Now I have labeled each child's name in their section as well as um, labeled and made it clear for them to know where their math books are and their language art books, their typing books and so forth. So we have enough room for them to squeeze their science and history journals to the side of these organizers and even like their art mediums that they're learning um, just right at the top like their pastels. So the kids know that there's a place for everything here and that they need to put everything in their place. Now this system has been working really well even with imperfect children and I love that they can just quickly grab the subjects they're working on and easily put them away again. I might quickly add here, I will create a source page for all the items I talk about, like my favorite labeler and organizers, and I will link it all in the description for you to source the items that you see and maybe think would work for you too. So inside this hardworking cupboard, I also utilize the inside of the doors by adding just some simple command hooks where we hang their morning and daily school checklists in these clear sleeves that wipe off um, easily with dry erase markers. They're especially useful for these smaller kids where staying on task is a little more difficult. The older kids catch on to their routine a little quicker, but they're just nice to have as a reminder for everyone when we start to slack a little. <laughs> All right, let's just keep with this lower row of cabinets. The middle cabinet houses most of our art supplies. Um, I find keeping similar items in their labeled boxes or containers makes it easy for them to just grab, go, and clean up. Now, because this is such a deep and tall cabinet, I had smaller items to corral like markers and crayons, glue, colored pencils, etc. I just used these handy shelf risers to be able to stack these bins without actually having to put them on top of each other, which would have been a messy pain. <laughs> Now down below, I have larger bins that do stack nicely and still look clean and simple. These hold our paint supplies, beads, and just kind of a random mix of crafting supplies when they want to get creative. There's a bin that's full of like busy hand activities to help them listen when I'm teaching or reading to them that they can just grab. Um, all right, moving on. These right side cabinets are actually all mine <laughs> for now, um, as I really needed some storage too. So I keep a lot of my gear in here. Um, the printer actually fits nicely inside these deep cabinets. The upper cabinets hold a lot of my products that I need to promote and grow my Tidbits planners business, my Tidbits linen business, as well as my 
tidbits blog business. <laughs> it just all is nicely in here for quick reference and um, planning or working as needed. Now the upper middle cabinet is full of just kind of general office supplies that we need like tape, string, hole punchers, paper cutters. Um, this cool vintage bin keeps our envelopes and card making supplies. You can see there's a mix of boxes and bins as I just kind of wanted to use what we already had to fill the spaces and group the items together. I have one daughter getting really into art and we have stored her um, sketching and water supply, watercolor supplies in these bins right here. I have a little reward system and they can choose some simple prizes from this big basket I have stored on the top shelf. It's really fun. So the last cupboard in here holds a variety of paper that they can grab for all their projects. We seem to go through a lot of paper now that we're homeschooling. They are always grabbing it to draw, write, fold paper for origami, and whatever during their free time. Um, I have another paper divider for some like how to draw books, some creative learning books that they can just grab and entertain themselves. So I also keep a selection of books right inside our homeschool room where we do have like more fun books in their rooms. I wanted to keep the books that support um, their learning or character development right inside this room as kind of an encouragement for them to grab and read at least during school time. A lot of these are republished books from The Good and the Beautiful. I talked more about um, that homeschool curriculum in the video I did all about homeschool. And um, I know these books are clean, kid-friendly, level appropriate, and very educational. So my older kids have their big hefty math books in this um, cabinet, but I kind of have a lot of empty space or space that I could use to fill with more. And um, that's a tip I have for organizing. When you get to space, you will likely need to acquire more. Um, and if you do, and the space is already filled to the brim, it's gonna be really hard to find spots for those new items. So I always like to leave a little wiggle room when I organize a space. So now I'm going to open up the drawers in these desks that we have placed in here. Now I knew adding these in here would make the space feel a little tight, but the storage was desperately needed and makes the space just so functional. Now this is a computer or work desk. I love that it has a long thin drawer for office supplies. Well, I love when everything coordinates, like maybe you saw with my old office. This is a kid's space, so that wasn't very realistic. So we just have a mix of pens and Sharpies and rulers and erasers and so forth. Um, the smaller drawer holds our tape dispensers, our stapler, calculator, and a little more. Then I love that these desks have a filing cabinet drawer. I have a hanging file for each kid to just quickly store their art projects or keeper projects. I kind of plan that at the end of the year, I'll just go through it and decide what to hold on to and put them in their little childhood school boxes um, and then have those empty for the new year. So this other cabinet holds our history and science curriculum that I currently teach to them. And um, they have some big math activity boxes for the younger kids. That was just the best spot for it. So this other desk I have, I've designated as the sewing desk. Now, I want sewing to be more convenient and accessible for all of us. I love to sew and I want my kids to learn from me, hopefully this summer. And if it gets too big of a pain to get it all out, we just don't sew. So I have the machine tucked away so that it's super easy to pull it out and all the other drawers just hold our main sewing supplies. Um, my fabric storage has to kind of overflow into our hallway closet, but that's working just fine for now. So when we're not involved in a sewing project, this desk is just empty for them to use and study at, which works great. Now, ideally I would have an entire room for sewing, <laughs> but I don't think that's ideal for very many homes. So we just learn to make it work as best as we can. Well, that is basically all we have in this space. Like I mentioned, you can head to my blog to read my nine tips for organizing a productive at-home learning and creating space. I also took some nice photography of all the ideas and you may want to um, add them to a Pinterest board for home organization to refer to later. I sure appreciate you watching my video and I would love to hear your own organizing ideas in the comments below. 
If you could just take a minute to hit that subscribe button on YouTube, um, you'll be able to see all my weekly videos as I work hard this year to finally finish our pole barn home one room at a time and share more inspiration for do-it-yourself do it living with you. Again, thanks for watching and I will be back soon.